Cancer, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for September 2018. Make sure you click in the description box down below. You can check out the brand new Stormy Grace merch, which is so cool. Uh, it's in partnership with my friends at Bad Manners. You can check them out in the description box down below as well. All right, Cancer, this month we've got full systems online and moving forward. The personal planets are out of retrograde. We've got our two big daddy planets, both Saturn and Pluto, also coming direct this month. So we are really just able to get on with it, which I think is such a, a beautiful energy to be working with this month. Now, I will tell you there's a couple things this month that I think are absolutely fabulous. First of all, we've got a full moon that's going to be happening this month that I think brings some good attention your way in your career zone. But we've also got a little blip of energy in there with Mars and Uranus warring this month uh, at the second part of the month. So I do wonder if that's going to bring a little bit of conflict into your world as well. Let's jump in here. Let's break this month down by date and talk about about it so I can get you out and enjoying September, okay? All right, right here at the beginning of the month, we've got Mercury, our communication planet, our thinking planet. So what's on your mind? Where's your focus? Where's your mental focus? Moving into Virgo, where the sun is also at. The sun brings light, heat, life, and vitality. You, you want to shine in this area. So your thinking, your energy, your essence is going to be lighting up your third house, which this is the house of communication. It's communication. It's studying. It's siblings. It's selling things. Maybe you've got a house to sell. Maybe you need to buy a new car. Maybe you've got a short trip coming up. All of these things become into your view and in focus and you are living them. There is light here. There's actual movement. So on any of these energies, you can have some positive energy moving forward. If you're studying something, this helps that mental energy. Oh my goodness, it just helps you to absorb, especially because Mercury is a natural third house ruler and Mercury is also a, co is it also a ruler to Virgo as well. So see, this energy is very, very friendly for you. Now on the 9th, we're going to have a new moon also happening in this third house. So it's very fortunate because just later in the month, we're also going to have Jupiter in a sextile to Pluto, which is a phenomenal energy to be working with. But what this energy at the new moon tells me for you this month is first of all, remember that a new moon, this is where we plant these seeds of intention. We wipe the slate clean and we begin something new, right? So plant those seeds of intention in your third house with your siblings and your communication in your thinking, in your alignment with that, if you're studying, if you're working on a website and you're ready, you're thinking you're going to launch it out there. If you're writing a book, the third house is where we're writing. In the ninth house, we publish that thing, right? So right here, what do you want? What are your seeds of intention for this area of your life? Because this is a successful new moon. This has success written all over. It has opportunity. You have to do a little bit of work, but it has opportunity written all over it. So this is a very supportive moving forward new moon, even though there is a little bit of Neptune energy, which can cloud some things. But for the most part, this one's on your side, okay? Now backing up just a second. On the sixth, we've got Saturn, our granddaddy, <laughs> moving out of retro great moving direct in your seventh house in Capricorn. So this is relationships. Now what I love about the um, energy of Saturn as it does come direct is that it actually sits in some nice trine energy. So this is success in your relationships. Um, this is looking at your pattern in relationships. This is looking at um, what needs to adjust in your relationships, right? Are there relationships that over the last few months you've been being asked to let go of, right? So that you can move forward with healthier relationships. I also think that this particular energy, because Saturn is maturing us here, helps to bring the healthy kind of relationships into your life that you've been looking for and definitely craving. Now, on the same day, on the 9th, as that new moon, we've also got Venus. How could I forget about Venus? Venus moving into Scorpio with Jupiter, so lighting up your fifth house. This is the other reason I think I like this month for you. If you're single, this is a time where you can definitely be meeting someone. The fifth house is true love. It's romance, but it's the beginning of romance, right? It's the, this is new. I still like you. I think you smell good. You know what I mean? It's that time. This is a wonderful energy for getting creative and joyful and playing and doing those kinds of things. Both Venus and Jupiter are benefic planets. So this is a lot of benefit energy here. Now, if you do have children or you're not single, this is an energy where you can see your relationships thriving. You could see some love. You could see some play. You could see some joy coming up. Maybe something's going really well, or you, there's an opportunity that comes up for one of your children. You could be making some babies. Hey, go ahead with that, right? If that's what you're into. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you've got lots of opportunities here. And I will say this too, if you are married, I feel like this brings a sweet spot to you. This brings a sweet spot to this relationship energy for you as well, okay? Now, as we get to the 11th of the month, we have Mars, our action planet, no longer in retrograde, thank goodness, and moving out of Capricorn, moving into the sign of Aquarius. So for you, this is going to light up the 8th house. Okay, now the 8th house is where we have joint things, joint resources, whether it be finances, taxes, um, the actual act of sex, right? It is our deepest, most personal place where we keep our fears and our talents. This is an intimate energy, and this is also an energy that could reflect on your partner as well. So with Mars being here, we've got action, movement, initiation, assertion, aggression, all of these things. Your partner could be making some additional money, and this includes in a business relationship. Maybe there's some kind of profit or a windfall that comes your way. The other things that I think about with having Mars here in the eighth house is if you do need to pursue something, maybe you need funding for a business, maybe you want um, a student loan, maybe you're working on those taxes, whatever it is, wherever you're going to jointly connect, this could definitely bring a lot of action and energy. And let's not forget that Mars is a sexual planet. It's a libido energy. So you could be having some nookie. And I support you as long as everybody's on board, okay? So very good. That's a very good energy as well. On the 12th, like I said, we've got Jupiter and Pluto in a sextile. Jupiter wants to bring wisdom. Pluto wants to invert us and transform us, right? So here, as we're looking at these energies in a sextile, when the planets have sex, that's good for us, right? Because in a sextile, you're going to intelligently do something. You're going to intelligently do something to take up the opportunity presented to you. So what's so great about Jupiter and Pluto here specifically is that in your relationships, you just have such a delicious opportunity here to play. You don't have to work for this. You don't have to fight for this. This is coming from a natural place, natural growth that you've experienced, right? So this is a very joyful energy. So get out, go play, go on that date. If you haven't been on a date forever, do it. You've been trying to do things with your kids, make more time. If you've been trying to express yourself, you wanna do that dance show, you finally wanna show up for open mic, you wanna launch that business. Yes, this is the time to be doing that, okay? On the 18th, though, I want to give you a heads up here. It really kicks off on the 11th, but I think the pinnacle is about the 17th and the 18th of this, okay? Mars is going to be in a square to Uranus. Now, Mars square Uranus is a warring energy. It brings conflict. It brings difficulties. It brings disruption, right? So these are things that could definitely be showing up in your world. Now, you've got Mars over here in your 8th house, and you've got Uranus over here in your 11th house. One of the things that I see here is if you have a clash with friendships or if you have a clash in some way on social media or in a social zone, right? Someone's coming after you, something happens. Your job is to respond innovatively, creatively, inventively. Your job is not to respond in a way that will compromise your reputation in any way, right? Don't lose your tacos over something that is going to pass, okay? But this is a tough, warring energy. So, you have to find a way to take whatever rebellion that you've got going on here and turn it into something positive, okay? I look forward to seeing what that looks like for you, so keep me posted, all right? Now, on the 23rd, excuse me, on the 22nd, we've got the autumn equinox. We're changing seasons. Isn't this great? We get all of the planets going back forward, where most of them, and then we get to change season. We get to literally walk into a new season of life together, which is a big deal because in Western astrology, we follow the seasons, not the constellations. On the 23rd, to welcome in this new season, we have got um, this bright sun shining in Libra energy, and we'll really be able to, I think, celebrate the full movement of that. So it's going to be absolutely delicious. On the 24th, we've got a full moon happening in Aries. Now this is going to be at the top of your chart. So your career zone, this is what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. I feel like this is a wonderful opportunity, especially it's got a nice Saturn influence to it at this moon. Um, this is a nice place where maybe you catch the attention of someone. This could be a promotion, someone higher up. Maybe you find out you have people on your team that are team cancer and you didn't even know it. This 
could also be a time too where maybe you've had um, Saturn usher in some new partners, business partners, or partners that help you fulfill your soul level calling. Because 10th house is not just career. It's what talent do you have that you're taking out in the world to give away, to make the world better, to create resources, to use resources in some way. So even if you're retired, this is an energy where this could be very, very good for you. Now I will say with that warring Mars Uranus energy, and because this full moon is in Aries, Aries is ruled by Mars, I do, in my feel, in my estimation of this, think you also have to be careful because at a full moon, we have to end something, acknowledge something, or adjust something. So there's a very big shift that comes with it. And with a warring energy kind of in the mix, this could be a time too where there's conflict at work. But again, be innovative, be inventive, be creative. Don't be harsh and irrational because you may be um, wading your way through some kind of conflict in a situation in your working zone. And the way that you handle it will really define you moving forward. So set yourself up for success, Cancer, all right? Now on the 30th, we've got Pluto coming direct and out of retrograde in the sign of Capricorn. So remember, Pluto inverts us, right? He wants us to transform. So he says, all right, Cancer, the old you has got to die off so that a new one can live because I need a mature version. I need this next version to move forward with these relationships, whether they be romance and you're finally ready to bring it in and to let it in and it's good and it's healthy and you're safe or it's a business partnership or it's the relationship of you with you. You finally feel like you've got some ground underneath you and you're solid and you can make some different decisions. Whatever it is, the relationship zone with you has taken a shift and it's all for the better, okay? All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. If you need a reading or there's anything I can help you with, come visit me at stormygrace.com. If not, thank you so much for spending some time with me this month, okay? I love you guys so much, and I'll see you next month.